good day to all of you and uh, welcome to my next lecture on uh, engineering physics fifth module material science and today my topic is dielectric properties of material and this is the last topic of uh, the fifth module now let us try to understand what are exactly the dielectric materials in a simple sense one can say dielectric materials are insulating materials or they are electrically non conducting materials not only that which has the ability to get polarized let us try to understand the word polarization maybe a little later but when you look into the various kind of examples the very good example i can speak about glass glass is a insulating material and it is also called as the dielectric material wood is an insulating dielectric material rubber also is an example for the dielectric material paper is the example for the dielectric material likewise we have got plenty of dielectric materials now to understand the properties of the dielectric let us start with a very fundamental part of the topic that is dipole the definition of the dipole says a pair of equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance so now look at there are two charges here one is plus q charge and one more is a minus q charge they are equal in magnitude but they are different in polarity so there are two equal and opposite charges and they are been separated by a small distance so the charges which are equal in magnitude opposite in polarity separated by a small distance is what we call as a dipole now how do we calculate the strength of this dipole and that can be calculated using a physical quantity called as a dipole moment which has been represented as mu and the dipole moment is the product of magnitude of the either of the charges and the distance of separation between them so you can try to take the magnitude of one of the charges as we know both the charges have got equal magnitude and d is the distance of separation then the product of these two is what is called as the dipole moment so mu is simply equal to q into d is the dipole moment and q is measured in terms of unit called as a coulomb and distance is measured in terms of a meter therefore coulomb meter is a unit of the dipole moment since the dipole moment depends on only charge and the distance with the magnitude of the charge the dipole moment also increases and if the distance of separation of the two charges increases then the dipole moment also increases now let us try to see what are the types of dielectric material that we have dielectrics are being generally divided into two categories the one category is called as a non polar dielectrics and the other one is called as a polar dielectric now when you consider a molecule and if you see the atoms of those molecules or maybe charges of those molecules such that if the effective centers of positive and negative charges of the atoms or molecule coincide then such kind of molecules are called as a non polar dielectrics or non polar molecules let us try to see the examples hydrogen is an example of non polar molecule nitrogen methane ethane all such kind of examples are the non polar molecules here you can try to take the example of methane we have ch4 so carbon is at the central atom at the center and there are four hydrogen atoms are been bonded at equal distance now here carbon is considered to be a positively charged atom and all these hydrogens are considered to be the negatively charged atoms and if i am going to take the effective center of all these negative charges 
and that of the positive charges, these two charges are going to overlap. And that is what the definition says that. If the effective centers of positive and negative charges of an atom of a molecule coincide. So here you can see the positive charges and negative charges are going to coincide. Therefore, methane is an example of a non-polar molecule. Similarly, let us look into the example of ethene C6H6. We have six carbon atoms and each carbon atom has got an hydrogen atom. And if I am asking you where is the effective center of all these carbon atoms, the effective center of all these carbon atoms comes exactly at the center. Similarly, if I ask you what is the effective center of all the hydrogen atom, it is also coming exactly at the center. Now we can see the positive charge and the negative charges are going to overlap such that there is no distance of separation. Hence, I can say the dipole moment of this kind of molecule is going to be equal to zero. So, such kind of molecules are called as a non polar dielectric materials. So, we can write as many number of examples. So, now if you consider a bulk material, I can try to take methane as a bulk or ethane as a bulk, nitrogen as a bulk. Every one molecule of ethane or methane or any such kind of molecules where the effective centers is going to be equal to zero. Therefore, the net dipole moment of all these molecules in a bulk is also equal to zero. Therefore, they do not show any kind of dipole moment in the absence of an electric field. So, all these molecules where the effective centers of the positive and negative are going to overlap one over the other, then such kind of molecules are called as a non-polar dielectrics. The second type of dielectric is what called as a polar dielectric. Where the definition says, if the effective centers of positive and negative charges of an atom or molecule do not coincide, that means they do not overlap one over the other, they are two separate charges, two are two separate entities. Now, such kind of molecules are what we call as the dielectric, polar dielectric materials. Let us try to take a very simple example that is water, H2O. We have oxygen here, which has been bonded with the two hydrogen atoms here. Now, if I'm going to take the effective center of oxygen, being there is only one oxygen, I can try to take it at the center. And there are two hydrogen atoms here. And if I'm going to take the effective center, which comes exactly here. Now, you can very clearly see that the positive and the negative do not overlap. They have certain uh, you know, amount of dipole moment. Hence, there is a dipole moment, which is not going to be equal to zero. Therefore, water is a polar dielectric molecule. So, let us look into the ammonia. Here we have N as the nitrogen atom and there are three hydrogen atoms are surrounded. And if I am asking you what is exactly the effective center of a positive and negative, they do not once again overlap. Hence, the net dipole moment is not going to be equal to zero. So, I can call it as a polar dielectric. Now, even if you consider as a bulk material, every one molecule there is a negative and there is positive. There is negative and there is positive, such that individually there is a dipole moment. Individually there is a dipole moment. Even in the case of a bulk, they need not have the dipole moment because dipoles are considered to be the vector quantities. The direction of every dipole is being considered from negative towards the positive. So, if you try to take it in a bulk, imagine you have got a dipole here along this direction. There may be one more dipole will be in the opposite direction, one more dipole in the opposite direction. So, if I am going to ask you what is the net dipole moment of the two, it is going to be equal to zero. So, in a similar manner, you can see for every one dipole, there may be one more dipole in the opposite direction. For every one dipole, there is one more dipole will be in the opposite direction. So, if I see the net dipole moment is going to be equal to zero. It is going to be equal to zero. That is the reason that as a single molecule, it is going to exhibit the dipole moment. But in a multi, they need not have any kind of dipole moment. Once again, the dipole moment could be equal to zero. But however, such kind of molecules are what we call as the polar dielectric materials. Now, let us see what is called as a polarization. 
Now, to understand the polarization, now let me try to take an example of an atom. So, I will consider an atom exactly at the center where electrons are all moving around the nucleus. Okay. And uh, there is a nucleus at the center where if I see what is the effective center, the effective center is going to overlap one, once again at the center, giving out the net dipole moment is going to be equal to zero. So it is a neutral atom. And for every neutral atom, the net dipole moment is going to be equal to zero. Now what we do is that we try to supply a large amount of electric field externally. So when a large amount of electric field, negative field here, positive field being applied, and we are all aware that the positive charge will be attracted towards the negative and the negative charge will be attracted towards the positive. This is the negative and this is going to be a positive. This is going to be a positive. And due to which you can see the negative and positive charges are being separated. Hence it is going to exhibit some amount of dipole moment. And this process is what we call as the polarization. Therefore, the definition says the displacement of charges in atoms or molecules under the action of applied electric field leading to the development of the dipole moment. This is what we call as the polarization. Therefore, an atom is not a dipole because the algebraic sum of all the charges. If you consider it is going to be equal to zero, not only that, the net dipole moment also going to be equal to zero. But when the same atom, if it been applied by a strong electric field, then the dipoles are going to be separated, the charges are going to be separated, and this process of separation of the positive and negative charges in the presence of an external electric field, what we call as the polarization. Therefore, in this diagram, we can very clearly say that. It is not a polarized molecule. Why? Because the effective centers are going to overlap one over the other. But in case you apply an external electric field, okay, you can see the negative charges and the positive charges are slightly going to, uh, you know, separate. Here you can see there is a positive charge being the nucleus. And if I'm going to ask you where is exactly the effective center of the electrons, the effective center of the electrons are here. Hence, there is a difference of distance between the two positive and negative charges. Hence, it is going to exhibit the dipole moment. Therefore, this dipole moment is going to exist only in the presence of an electric field. But if you remove the electric field, what will happen? The charges once again come back to the original position, giving out the zero dipole moment. Therefore, polarization is a mechanism only taking place in the presence of an external electric field. Now, let me see that how this polarization is going to take place in the case of a bulk materials, both in the case of a non-polar as well as in the case of a polar molecule. Now, first let us try to see in the case of a non-polar molecule, how this polarization is going to take place in the bulk materials. See, in a bulk material, there are large number of atoms or molecules. When I say bulk, it has got infinite number of atoms, infinite number of molecules are going to be present. Every one molecule is going to show the net dipole moment equal to zero. Every one dipole is going to show the dipole moment equal to zero. There are no dipole moment. So in the absence of an electric field, external electric field, so the net dipole moment is going to be equal to zero in the case of a non-polar molecule. Now what we'll do, we'll apply a strong electric field. Let us try to apply a very strong electric field. And when we apply an electric field, we know the positive negative charges are going to be separated and hence every one charge is going to exhibit some amount of dipole moment, some amount of dipole moment. Therefore, in a bulk material, now it is going to show a net amount of dipole moment. Therefore, this process is been taken place in a non-polar molecule where a bulk is going to show the net dipole moment equal to zero in the absence of an electric field. But in the presence of an electric field, the same material is going to show some amount of dipole moment. And this process is a polarization in the case of a bulk material. Similarly, you see in the case of a polar molecule. I will try to take the example of the polar molecule, which I already mentioned. Where one molecule here, it is going to show some amount of dipole moment. One more molecule is going to show here, there are one more dipole moment. 
this molecule also going to show some amount of dipole moment so each and every one molecule is going to show some amount of dipole moment here but what is the net dipole moment in the presence in the absence of an electric field it is equal to zero why it is going to be zero because the dipole moment is a vector quantity it has got a direction for every one dipole may be in the positive direction there may be one more dipole in the opposite direction so hence the net dipole moment is going to be zero in the case of a bulk material but when we try to apply an electric field what exactly going to happen these dipoles are going to rotate they are going to shift along the direction of the electric field now we can see every one electric charge or a dipole is going to be oriented all along the direction of the electric field you can see here all these dipoles are going to be reoriented okay now the net dipole moment is not going to be equal to zero this process what we see in the presence of an electric field where the materials are going to show some amount of dipole moment therefore in non polar molecule in the absence of an electric field the dipole moment is zero even in the case of a bulk material it is going to be zero but it is going to polarize in the presence of an electric field a polar molecule as a individual molecule there is a dipole moment but it is a bulk there is no dipole moment but in the presence of an electric field all these dipole moments are been oriented in the direction of the electric field hence they are able to give out some kind of dipole moment and this process of exhibiting the dipole moment in the presence of an external electric field is what we call as a polarization now let us try to see what is a dielectric constant the definition of the dielectric constant is that it is a ratio of permittivity of any dielectric material to the permittivity of vacuum now when you consider a charge a charge has got certain region in which it can influence over the other charges the other charges can be attracted or repelled based on the property of the charges we are aware like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other and this attraction and repulsion that is going to take place only in the presence of the two charges when they are at the close vicinity now when one charge is going to be present in the other vicinity then its electric lines of force are been able to influence over the other and this influence of the electric line of forces been represented in terms of a term called permittivity it is the ability of the electric lines of force to enter into a field therefore the ratio of the permittivity of any dielectric material any dielectric material it could be water as a dielectric glass as a dielectric paper as a dielectric wood as a dielectric rubber as a dielectric so you try to take the permittivity of that medium to the permittivity of the free space that is a vacuum and this ratio is called as the dielectric constant or static dielectric constant and you can see here this is frequency dependent it entirely depends on the frequency it is not having any kind of dimension hence it is called as a dimensionless quantity because it is a permittivity of any medium to the permittivity of the free space and the unit get cancel each other and the third is that it is a constant for a given material for every one material the dielectric constant of a material is a constant let us see the example in the case of vacuum if i try to take epsilon r epsilon by epsilon not where epsilon not is vacuum and even epsilon also vacuum then it is going to be equal to 1 and it is a least dielectric constant the medium having the least dielectric constant that is a vacuum but if you see it is the air medium the dielectric constant is very very closer to that of the vacuum because air medium having no much kind of ability to oppose the electric line of forces passing through them so hence the dielectric constant is very very close that is 1.3056 for air but if you see in the case of glass its value is going to be equal to 5.6 however for different kind of glasses the value of uh, dielectric constant varies but it can vary from around 5 to around 12 or 13 depends on the kind of glasses we have 
crown glasses, we have got denser glasses, we have got flint glasses, you know, there are a variety of glasses. So accordingly, the dielectric constant can be varied. The dielectric constant of water is 80. So it is a bit larger. But Ababa, if we really go through the conductivity of these materials, the dielectric constant goes on increases and dielectric constant is going to become infinity for any conductors. Why? Because a conductor is one which allows the electric line, uh, electricity to pass through. There is a reason that the dielectric constant is going to be equal to infinity. There are no lines of charges are being allowed to pass through. So hence, the dielectric constant is going to be equal to infinity. However, the different materials are going to show the different dielectric constant. Now, let us see how this polarization that can be defined or that can be calculated. The polarization is simply nothing but it is the amount of dipole moment induced per unit volume of the dielectric. As I already explained, in the presence of an external electric field, the dipoles are being separated and it is going to exhibit the dipole moment. So, how much dipole moment is being induced per unit volume of the dielectric is called as a dipolarization. Therefore, I can say polarization is the net dipole moment that is mu divided by the volume per unit volume of the dielectric materials. But what is mu? Mu is the dipole moment which I can write the product of the charge and the distance of separation. What is the volume? It is nothing but the area into the distance of separation. Now here d d get cancel each other giving out what is called as a q by area. q is nothing but it is a charge divided by the area. And this Q by E area is nothing but it is sigma and this sigma is called as a charge density. Charge density has been defined as a charge per unit area which is measured in terms of coulomb per meter square. Therefore, I can very clearly say that the polarization in the case of a static molecule is simply nothing but it is the amount of charge density present in the dielectric material. However, the polarization is directly proportional to the electric field. Because in the presence of an electric field, the dipole moments goes on increases. It goes on increases. Naturally, the polarization also increases. Therefore, the polarization is directly proportional to the electric field. And to remove this proportionality, we put a constant like this, epsilon naught into chi into E, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space, which you already come across. And this chi, which is nothing but it is the dielectric susceptibility which has been given by the equation epsilon r minus 1 means it is 1 less to the dielectric constant. Therefore, the polarization is been given by the equation epsilon naught into epsilon r minus 1 into E that is the electric field. And we are aware that epsilon r is a constant for a given material. Epsilon naught however is a constant and only depends on the electric field. Therefore, more and more exactly is the applied electric field, there is more and more polarization that is taking place. But if there is no electric field, then the net dipole moment is also going to be equal to zero, the polarization also going to be equal to zero. So this is what exactly we see in the various kind of materials. Therefore, I can also try to put this polarization in terms of a term called as a polarizability, which is being represented in terms of alpha. Now, how much is polarization is going to take place in a material? It is entirely depends on the dipole moment. Therefore, I can say, if mu is the dipole moment acquired by each atom, when a material is subjected to an electric field, then we can say mu is directly proportional to the electric field. Because more and more is the electric field, there is more and more distance of separation by the two charges. Hence, the material is going to exhibit more and more dipole moment. And to remove this proportionality, I am going to use a term called alpha. And what is this alpha? This alpha is called as a polarizability of the atom or the molecule. The amount of polarizability of the atom or the molecule is been represented alpha. Therefore, I can say mu is equal to alpha into E. And it has been measured in terms of unit called as a farad meter square. Far farad is a unit of a capacitor. Okay. So, and meter square is a uh, the area, therefore, farad meter square is a unit of the uh, polarizability. Now, 
let us see whether we are able to polarize the molecules if we are what are the types of polarizations there are various type of polarization however there are three different types of polarization that i am going to explain one after the other the first kind of polarization is called the electronic polarization second polarization is the ionic polarization and the third one is the orientation polarization so these are the three dominant polarization mechanisms there are other kind of polarization mechanisms but they are not dominant therefore let us look into these three one after the other the first kind of polarization as i already mentioned is electronic polarization so let us look into what is this electronic polarization to understand that let us try to see an atom where there is a nucleus at the center and there are electrons are been embedded all around actually all these electrons are moving all around and in the absence of the electric field the net dipole moment is going to be equal to zero we know that it doesn't show any kind of dipole moment because the effective centers of the positive and negative charges are going to overlap now you try to apply the electric field and when you try to apply the electric field we are aware that when a strong amount of positive charge field is been applied here and a strong amount of negative field is been applied here then this positive charge will repel this nucleus and they try to move away and all these electrons are been repelled by the negative and hence i can see there is a effective center of the negative charges here and there is an effective center positive here so it is going to exhibit some amount of dipole moment some amount of dipole moment now here the electrons of a given atom are displaced or the electronic charges of an atom are been displaced in the presence of an electric field and this process of polarization is called the electronic polarization now in this polarization we are able to calculate the amount of polarizability that is going to take place and this electronic polarizability is given by alpha e is equal to epsilon not into epsilon r minus 1 divided by n where n is the number of atoms per unit volume of the dielectric material how many number of atoms are there in the dielectric material depending on that amount of polarizability however we can very clearly see that the electronic polarizability is reciprocal to the number of atoms per unit volume why more and more number of atoms are going to be present naturally the electronic polarizability is going to decrease because of the large number however if the dielectric constant is going to be more then the electronic polarizability also going to be increasing therefore the electronic polarizability is given by the equation alpha e is equal to epsilon not into epsilon r minus 1 divided by n that is the first kind of you know polarization that is the electronic polarization let us see the second polarization and that is the ionic polarization the word ionic is mainly for the ionic molecules like we have sodium chloride it is an ionic molecule or you try to take some kind of alkali halides they are all ionic molecules where you find in these kind of molecules the ionic polarization going is going to be dominant so let us try to take the example of sodium chloride in the absence of an electric field you see the sodium atoms as well as the chlorine atoms are been equally spaced and they are been oriented according to the structure given we have a sodium atom here and we have a chlorine atom chlorine is generally bigger atom compared to that of the sodium so we have alternatively placed sodium and chlorine sodium and chlorine sodium and chlorine like this now if i am going to ask you what is the effective center of the positive as well as negative charges that is the sodium positive and chlorine negative it is going to be equal to zero hence the net dipole moment is going to be equal to zero it doesn't show any kind of dipole moment now you try to apply the electric field now as soon as a strong amount of electric field is been applied at the two corners if you try to apply a very strong electric field positive as well as negative the sodium atom which were present here are displaced and the chlorine atoms which are present are been attracted and hence the distance between the sodium and the chlorine here are going to decrease this sodium which was here and it is going to displace here chlorine is going to be which also going to be displaced to the left side so here also 
the dipole moments are going to be displaced. Now you can see every one positive charge that is a sodium atom is going to be displaced away from a positive charge and all these electrons negative charged particles that is the chlorines are repelled by the negative charge and so they are being attracted toward the positive and due to which we can see the dipoles are going to change in terms of their magnitude. Here I can say this is the amount of dipole. This is the amount of dipole here. But this amount of dipole is a little larger here. It is going to be larger here. It is from the negative. Now if I am going to ask you, is the effective center of the two is going to be equal to zero? It is not going to be zero. But in the case of a previous molecule, you can see here, this is the kind of dipole. This is the kind of dipole. And even the next dipole is going to be here. If I am going to ask you what is the net dipole moment, it is going to be equal to zero. But here in this case, it is not going to be equal to zero because the dipole moments here are going to shorten. That means the dipole moment is going to decrease here and the dipole moment is going to increase here. So hence, there is no net zero dipole moment. Therefore, this kind of polarization mechanism in the presence of an external electric field on the ionic molecules is what we call as a ionic polarization. I hope it is very clear. The third kind of polarization is the orientational polarization. The word itself, orientational is nothing but it is a directional. And this you see only in the case of polar dielectrics. Why? Because the polar dielectrics are the only dielectric which shows the dipole moment as an individual molecule. So let us try to take the example of water or oil or wax. So let me try to take one kind of orientation that is the electronic polarizability in the case of water. So you try to take the example of water where every one water molecule is a dielectric or every uh, 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 exhibiting the dipole moment. So it has got a dipole moment. Here also there is a dipole moment. Here also there is a dipole moment. Every molecule is going to show the dipole moment. But in the absence of an electric field, if I am going to ask you what is the net dipole moment, the net dipole moment is equal to zero. Why? Because every one dipole will get cancelled with the neighboring dipole, which is in the opposite direction. Now, when you apply an electric field, what happens? These dipoles try to rotate along the direction of the electric field. They are not going to retain along the same direction. They try to rotate, they try to turn. And this process where by the application of the electric field, these materials are going to exhibit the net dipole moment. It is what we call as a orientational polarization. Therefore, the dipoles are able to reorient in the direction of the electric field. So, this process of polarization is the orientational polarization. And if you try to calculate the, the coefficient of orientational polarization, and it is given by the equation, alpha naught is equal to mu square divided by 3 kT, where mu is the dipole moment, k is the Boltzmann constant, and t is the absolute temperature. Therefore, one thing that I can say that it is a temperature dependent. The orientational polarization is a temperature dependent, okay, and it is reciprocal. Therefore, these are the three different types of polarization that we have. Now, therefore, if I try to take a bulk material, what is the total polarizability? The total polarizability is nothing but it is a sum of it is a sum of the electronic polarization, ionic polarization, and the orientational polarization. Therefore, all the three polarizations are going to give you the net amount of polarization. Therefore, it is always equal to the sum of the three. However, all the three need not be the same in terms of magnitude. It can dominate depends on the kind of molecules. In the case of water molecules, orientational polarization is going to dominate compared to that of uh, uh, the ionic as well as the electronic. But in the case of sodium chloride, ionic uh, you know, polarization is going to dominate compared to that of the electronic as well as the orientational polarization. Therefore, depending on the kind of molecule that we have, the amount of polarization that is going to take place is going to be different. However, the sum of the three polarization is equal to alpha that is the total polarizability of the molecules okay therefore i can say when a material is subjected to temperature there will not have any influence on the electronic as well as on the ionic polarization mechanisms that means 
Electronic and ionic are independent of temperature. There is no difference in terms of their polarization when the temperature has been raised. But it brings a higher degree of randomness in the case of orientational polarization because we have seen more and more is exactly the temperature, lesser and lesser is the orientational polarization. Therefore, the polarization is going to change. Therefore, orientational polarization varies inversely as that of the temperature. Hence, we conclude that dielectric materials are the insulators which can be polarized. We have seen the various kinds of dielectric materials, both polar and non-polar molecules and uh, the concept of polarization and also the various mechanisms of uh, the polarizations. So these are the learnings that we have completed today. In the next lecture that I am going to continue with the other aspects of uh, the dielectric materials. Thank you very much.